Melody, Melvin, let's go here. Now, what were you saying? <clears throat> I was just saying that I feel that too much emphasis is put on writing. I really don't write that much, and I don't think it should be so important. How can you say that writing is not that important? Well, first of all, in life. Nobody writes that much anymore unless you're going to be a writer. Yeah. Who writes letters anymore? Yeah. We use the, um, the telephone. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Does anyone else in this room besides me still write letters? I do, Mr. Jeter. Now, why don't the rest of you write letters? We phone. Yeah, we use the telephone. Yeah. All right, why do you still write letters, Otomo? Because my friends live halfway around the world. <laughs> and phoning is a luxury I don't have. Sure is. <laughs> but I enjoy to write, Mr. Jeter. Okay. Written expression as opposed to oral expression. Okay. If you have a telephone and you use it all the time, why do you have to deal with written expression? Yeah. I disagree. All right, Atoma. I disagree. I think it's absolute nonsense. Oh. Oh. Atoma thinks it's nonsense. If, if something is nonsense, one should call it nonsense. Oh. I, I, mean, I, I mean, if you're writing your memoirs... My what? Memoir. Your diary. It's so eternal. It could pop up 300 years from now. Then you would have to know how to be extremely clear for people to understand it. Today's slang is tomorrow's puzzle. Hey, that's boss. That's really true. <laughs> Express yourself. It's later than you think. Is that what you say in New York? Um, enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Well, I like express yourself better. Women don't understand that, man. Mm -hmm. They don't. That is stupid. They don't. What do you mean women don't understand that? Women run their mouths all the time. Yeah. yeah. They don't write nothing down. Y'all talk your heads off. Watch your mouth. If they disinvented the telephone, y'all would freak. That is a dumb, stupid male show with Melvin thing to say. Hey, forget it. I can rap. That's no sweat. But sometimes, sometimes I get to thinking, right? All these really incredible things be running through my head. And I say to myself, myself, <laughs> I want to put it down. But there's a lot of work putting it down. You know, writing it down, looking over, checking out, giving it some, oh man, forget it. So you mean that uh, writing what you think takes more care and precision than speaking? Yes. Yeah, because if I'm talking to you, I tell you what's on my mind, and you understand what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. But if I write it down, it's just not as easy to be clear. Well, don't you think you should do something about that? How? All right, if you're going to write something to someone, what might be the first thing you'll think about? The person you're writing to? Right, because when you speak to someone, uh, they can usually see, uh, you can usually see, rather, the effect that you've had on that person. But when you write something down that someone else is going to read, uh, your responsibility is to who? Melvin. The reader. Right. Uh, how many of you actually uh, keep a journal or a diary or write poetry? Oh, I write poetry in my diary. But no one is going to see that, so I don't have to be here. One always writes a diary in hopes that it will be discovered. By who? Uh, Hollywood, hopefully. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. Uh, Gail, let's say you do go to Hollywood and you do become a star. And Hollywood wants to write your life story. And you go back to your diary to find out what happened in your life and you can't understand what you wrote. <laughs> now, Otomo, you keep a diary, right? Oh, yes, constantly. I'm an absolute addict about putting it all down. I have the strangest feeling it's important. My entire family keeps journals. We read them to each other on Monday nights. What? Does it help? It helps Monday nights. That's about all. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Mr. Jeter, I'm never without it. I have a friend who says I carry my journal like a camera. Listen, I have an idea. Why don't we all try to keep a journal? I want you to record your comments, your insights, your uh, <clears throat> loves, whatever. <laughs> I would like you to write about you, about your life, what you think, the important things, okay? That should take only a few sentences, right? Yeah, when I'm writing about you. All right. Anyway, in the meantime, there'll be no grade for this. Oh, good. All right. And I, I have to ask one more thing. I would hope that we can trust each other because I would like to read your journals to start us off. But if you don't want me to, I won't. I won't. In that case, just, just hand in what you want read out loud. I don't want to pry into your personal business, okay? Also, I would like everybody to pick out a book that expresses you, all right? Buy a fountain pen if that's what you want to do. What I want you to do is get involved with the pleasure of pen and paper. Oh, can Otama read his? Yeah. Well, it's up to him. Tomorrow, I have to choose what's for your ears. 
<laughs> All right, listen. Uh, tomorrow I'd like to hear something from everybody, okay? Uh, just to get it started. Have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye. Gail. Gail. Yes. Excuse me, Mr. Tito. May I speak with you for a moment? Sure, just a minute. Why don't you pull up a chair, sit down, relax. Okay. Do you have some juice? Oh, yes, thank you. I really enjoyed the lesson. It's been a most incredible two weeks. As a matter of fact, I've just written my uncle in Monrovia. I told him how exciting it is. He's somewhat of a writer himself, a journalist. He writes good letters. He encourages me to write good letters. Well, I think it's a skill that everybody should have. Listen, not to uh, change the subject or anything, but uh, let me ask you something. Do you, uh, do you like being, being an exchange student? I mean, it must be very strange for you to be in the school, not to mention uh, this class. Well, you're all so relaxed, aren't you? Everyone's so clever. Of course, that's always a help. It makes it so much easier for me to understand. And I think it's cool, Mr. Jeter. <laughs> How are your other classes? Oh, they're coming along very well. Except for the gymnasium. Oh, why? I, I've developed a somewhat low blood count. Nothing, nothing serious, of course. Uh. It just does away with the gymnasium. <laughs> Mr. Jeter, mm -hmm. I, I need your advice. Sure. I have an elderly friend who's a very special artist. But he doesn't have very long to live. Yet he has the sudden desire to express himself as though he were very young. I said to him, Maestro, you know, you must do as your brain says. So he has left his home for a long trip and is somewhere behaving as though he were 30. I'm not sure that I should be giving advice to the dying. I need to know if I've said the right thing. I need to know, Mr. Jeter. Well, <clears throat> uh, whatever advice I might give you is really unimportant. Uh, the important thing is that you, uh, you cared enough to do something for your friend. It seems to me that uh, he loved you well enough to follow your advice without any fear. So I would imagine that, uh, that you've done the right thing. Thank you. Would you uh, care for some of this? Oh, yes, thank you. Enjoy yourself. Today is possibly the best day I've had all month. I've read two more pages of Albert Camus, The Stranger. It's absolutely chilling. I think he's a very good writer. Now I look through my window and I see the people moving about the streets very quickly. I think what different rhythms people have. In my home, people have a much calmer rhythm. New York is very much like Paris. Everyone is in the middle of an emergency. <laughs> when I returned to Africa from Paris, I was always stepping on everyone's heels. I had become so used to rushing. I suppose it will be the same when I leave New York. I am very excited with being here. All right. Thank you. Oh, it sounds so different when I tell Marie this. Well, Atoma happens to be a very good writer. But writing very often allows each one of you to express your own personalities. But when you speak to someone, your audience, to some degree, determines what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. But when you put pen to paper, you're given the opportunity to uh, discover, explore, and develop your own ideas. Nothing is too great or too small. Um, there is no censorship of any kind except for what you put on yourselves. All right? <laughs> See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Mr. Jeter. Bye-bye. Hey, Madam. See
May I come in? Yes. You don't know me. Um, I am Mrs. Fuller. Oh. <laughs> Otama's mother. How do you do? Yes, he talks a great deal about you. Well, he's a pleasure to teach. Please, come in, sit down. Well, I've been sitting down all afternoon. <laughs> and as you can see, I'm dressed for something far more uncomfortable than this classroom. But ooh, my feet are tired. <laughs> do you have time? Uh, sure. Mm. I sent Otama home like a driver. Would you like a cigarette? No, no, thank you. The most disrupting people I met today. <laughs> oh, I'm sick from people with no conscience. But you have a conscience, I know. <laughs> Otama told me. And I'm nice because my, these are my husband's friends. But sometimes I'm so frustrated, I think I'm developing a twitch. I want to scream. <laughs> But I made him promise me that we will see no one for the whole month of July. I like July. It's, 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 it's too hot to pretend. Oh, I want to talk to someone. You know, my best friend is in Cairo. And uh, there are certain conversations that um, my husband cannot respond to, so... And Otoma tells me that his teacher has good eyes and a good mind. I, I say, I will talk to him. Otoma is very good with eyes. You know, he looks at you and he says, he has good eyes or he has bad eyes. And he, he's never wrong. <laughs> Sensitivity, you know, can all, always be trusted. <laughs> Don't you think... What can I call you, Mr. Jeter? Oh, Jeter. Most everyone just calls me Jeter. Uh, out of curiosity, where are you and your husband going to spend your uh, July? <laughs> Wherever we happen to land. Mm, you don't understand that. In July, um, my husband and I will be alone for the first time in 15 years. Oh. My son has leukemia. Who? Which, which son? Otama. He's the only son they have. But, uh, he looks so... Oh, lovely. yes, yes, he's wonderful. It's so deceiving, you know. I see him all full of life, and it gives me hope, and... And when my husband sees me full of hope, he says, Otama is dying, and you had better come face to face with it. So, I am coming face to face with it. My husband cannot talk about it. And if I start, well, he, he leaves me alone in the room, and it's really cruel for me to persist. But I must talk to someone. It's his death, not our secret. More attention must be paid to him. I have decided that, so that is my decision. I asked Otomo what impresses him most. He says, it is you and the experience he's having with his new friends in your class. He's, he's dying. Mm -hmm. He must go into the hospital next week. Does he know? I'm sure he knows. He's much too... Sophisticated not to guess when we are lying. But he wants to come to school till Thursday. That's his decision, not mine. He um, told me some story about uh, having a low blood count, and that's why uh, he couldn't attend gym. <laughs> Terrible liar. It's just that he doesn't want anyone to know, and he's right, you know. Uh, people have good intentions, but uh, in the end, you know, they often intrude. Well, I think I should go home. <laughs> I want to thank you for listening to me. Now that you know. And um, when Otama leaves after Thursday, you will understand. I'm sure he will want you to, to come and see him at the hospital. He'll be there for a while, you know. And, um, oh, but we're taking a house in the country. Perhaps you, you'd better wait till then. All right. 
you know, his best friends are not aware of what's happening to him, and I, I am betraying his trust a little, I think, to, to tell you, but I thought you ought to know. Um, I, I will be speaking with you at the end of the week. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry. So are we. We are very sorry. Thank you. Is she... Right, <laughs> went to Madison Square Garden to see Earth, Wind, and Fire. It was a real bad concert, the serious joint. I was really feeling hyper. After the concert, Otoma wanted to walk through Times Square. So we walked up. Excuse me, Mr. Cheetah. I'm sorry I'm late. I must admit I overslept. That's all right, just, uh, just take your seat. So we walked a ways. As we were walking, I was hipping Otoma to the sights and people. Otoma said that he ain't never seen so many strange people before. I could dig that, because there are some strange people in Times Square. We. Gail, why don't you read yours? <laughs> Someone has told you. You all know. Mr. Jeter, I think I'd like to be excused. Of course. <clears throat> I think that's probably a good idea for all of us. Won't we'll just all take a day off with excuse. I've just been talking with Mrs. Fulo. She's the mother of Prince Otoma Ben Fulo. The Prince would like very much to have you all come and visit him at the hospital on Tuesday. I shan't be able to go, Mr. Jeter will go with you. This has been a very difficult time for all of us. And I think you're all to be congratulated on how well you've handled yourselves. You all deserve a great deal of credit. 
Thank you, Mr. Jeter. Probably get some money together so we can uh, buy Otomo some gifts. And uh, we should also put together our transportation. Bonnie and uh, Gail, won't you take care of that for us, all right? What's the matter? Bonnie. I don't want to go to the hospital. But he wants to see you. I don't care. I don't want to go. You don't care? <sighs> Gail? I can't go and look at him like that. Well, I can't go and know he's dying like that. I can't do it. Melvin. It's very strange, man. <clears throat> I mean, one minute you're with the cat and he's fine. Everything is cool. And then, and then all of a sudden you learn that he's dying. It's too much. It's too much for who? He don't want to see me like this, man. Not in this head. So, um, no one wants to go, right? It'll be like going to a layout or a funeral. Atoma is alive. He is not dead. Now, you all are dealing with him like the man has already died. And you don't. You can't. You don't have the right to throw him away. The man is still alive. Mr. Jeter. Can we go on with the lesson, please? Sure. We'll go on with the lesson. I, uh... I was very pleased with, uh... with the journals that were read. At least you've gotten over the embarrassment of writing things down. Uh... How many are you going to continue with your journals? Good. Also, I, uh, I'm not going to let myself off the hook so easily. I promise that if uh, I was pleased with your response to this, this particular project, that I would uh, read something that I had written when I was a senior in high school. And I'm going to do that. It's called The Outcast, and uh, it's about uh, a friend of mine who was written a week before he died. He uh, accidentally stuck a knife into a, a garbage disposal and electrocuted himself. It's one look at Harvey, who is now standing on one foot and then the other, looking at a red jacket in a men's store window and clicking his tongue as though he's thought something about perfection suddenly that, that changed my mind about leaving him on the corner. We, uh, we jumped into a cab and headed uptown. The lights flashed off and on, solid as ice, and, and the bright blinkers of a taxi joins the multitude of taxis. The imagined sweetness of black girls at a distance sweating in their blouses and men defecting into the grind shows all up and down the block. The driver has turned the dial on his transistor and it stops at James Brown in the midst of a declaration that underlines the fact that we are all very well off except for the few who don't know it. It would be good to be in the country listening to the sounds of my blood roaring like a brook through my veins and my heart beating like a woodpecker. Yes, that's it. The country, with nobody planning the meals, nobody choosing the TV channels, and it's all gonna be the way it should have been with Mama and Papa. I might, I might even find a stray dog to protect from the highway. been so full of butterflies since Malcolm died. But what will I do with it? Where will it take me? <laughs> Look at that nigger with his hair dyed blonde, Harvey says, without disapproval, only to say there it is again. Yes, there it is again. 
The thing, the thing that hurts most about Harvey's death was his helplessness. I, I wished I could have uh, done something to get him over. But uh, I never had the chance. to start the collection for a Toma so we can pick up some refreshments and for our transportation to the hospital our transportation Bobby Raul y'all want to help me collect the money Obutu, Monrovia, Liberia. Dear Uncle William, my entire class came to my room at the hospital. Yes, they did. The room was full to the walls. It was like a party. These are my friends. It seems by miracle I have enough strength to get out of bed again. I even toured the hallway outside my room. I see this new energy as a gift. I have been very happy here with my new friends. And for whatever time is left me, I'm positive I owe much of it to them. Your loving nephew, Otoma Ben Fula. P.S. I am at the dawn of old age. I must be sensible. Are you surprised? Good I'm Robert Bird, and this is the TV62 News Break. Coming up is...